Chapter 6, How to Change Anything in Your Life, The Science of Neuro-Associative Conditioning. All of us, through the experience of life, have learned certain patterns of thinking and behaving to get ourselves out of pain and into pleasure. We all experience emotions like boredom, frustration, anger or feeling overwhelmed, and we develop strategies for ending these feelings. Some people use shopping, some use food, some use sex, some use drugs, some use alcohol, some use yelling at their kids. They know consciously or unconsciously, that this neural pathway will relieve their pain and take them to some level of pleasure in the moment. Whatever the strategy, if you and I are going to change it, we have to go through six simple steps, the outcome of which is to find a more direct and empowering way to get out of pain and into pleasure. These six steps of NAC will show you how to create a direct highway out of pain and into pleasure with no disempowering detours. They are. Step 1, decide what you really want and what's preventing you from having it now. You'd be surprised how many people came to me for private therapeutic work, and when I asked them what they wanted, they'd spend 20 minutes telling me what they didn't want, or what they no longer wanted to experience. We've got to remember that we get whatever we focus on in life. If we keep focusing on what we don't want, we'll have more of it. The first step to creating any change is deciding what you do want so that you have something to move toward. The more specific you can be about what you want, the more clarity you will have, and the more power you will command to achieve what you want more rapidly. We also must learn what's preventing us from having what we want. Invariably, what's preventing us from making the change is that we link more pain to making a change than to staying where we are. Step 2, get leverage, associate massive pain to not changing now, and massive pleasure to the experience of changing now. Most people know that they really want to change, yet they just can't get themselves to do it. But change is usually not a question of capability, it's almost always a question of motivation. But the problem, as I've said, is that change is often a should and not a must. Or it's a must, but it's a must for someday. The only way we're going to make a change now is if we create a sense of urgency that's so intense that we're compelled to follow through. If we want to create change, then, we have to realize that it's not a question of whether we can do it, but rather whether we will do it. Whether we will or not comes down to our level of motivation, which in turn comes down to those twin powers that shape our lives, pain and pleasure. Every change you've accomplished in your life is the result of changing your neuroassociations about what means pain and what means pleasure. One of the things that turns virtually anyone around is reaching a pain threshold. This means experiencing pain at such an intense level that you know you must change now, a point at which your brain says, I've had it, I can't spend another day, not another moment, living or feeling this way. Leverage is absolutely crucial in creating any change, in freeing yourself from behavioral burdens like smoking, drinking, overeating, cursing, or emotional patterns like feeling depressed, worried, fearful, or inadequate. Change requires more than just establishing the knowledge that you should change. It's knowing at the deepest emotional and most basic sensory level that you must change. If you've tried many times to make a change and you've failed to do so, this simply means that the level of pain for failing to change is not intense enough. You have not reached threshold, the ultimate leverage. The greatest leverage you can create for yourself is the pain that comes from inside, not outside. Knowing that you have failed to live up to your own standards for your life is the ultimate pain. If we fail to act in accordance with our own view of ourselves, if our behaviors are inconsistent with our standards, with the identity we hold for ourselves, then the chasm between our actions and who we are drives us to make a change. One of the strongest forces in the human personality is the drive to preserve the integrity of our own identity. If that doesn't create enough leverage, then focus on how it affects your loved ones, your children, and other people you care about. Many of us will do more for others than we'll do for ourselves. The key is to get lots of reasons, or better yet, strong enough reasons, why the change should take place immediately, not someday in the future. Step 3. Interrupt the limiting pattern. In order for us to consistently feel a certain way, we develop characteristic patterns of thinking, focusing on the same images and ideas, asking ourselves the same questions. 
The challenge is that most people want a new result but continue to act in the same way. I once heard it said that the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. The resources you need to change anything in your life are within you right now. It's just that you have a set of neuro associations that habitually cause you to not fully utilize your capability. What you must do is reorganize your neural pathways so that they consistently guide you in the direction of your desires rather than your frustrations and fears. To get new results in our lives, we can't just know what we want and get leverage on ourselves. We can be highly motivated to change, but if we keep doing the same things, running the same inappropriate patterns, our lives are not going to change, and all we'll experience is more and more pain and frustration. If you and I run the same old pattern, we're going to get the same old results. Sometimes people want to create a change because a behavior or emotional pattern creates pain for them. But they may also derive benefit from the very thing they're trying to change. You can do everything right, but if secondary gain is too strong, you will find yourself going back to the old ways. Someone with secondary gain has mixed emotions about changing. They say they want to change, but often they subconsciously believe that maintaining the old behavior or emotional pattern gives them something they couldn't get any other way. One of the key distinctions to interrupting a pattern is that you must do it in the moment the pattern is recurring. We need to scramble it beyond recognition, find a new pattern, and condition it again and again until it becomes our consistent approach. A simple way of breaking a pattern is by scrambling the sensations we link to our memories. The only reason we're upset is that we're representing things in a certain way in our minds. Try this right now by doing the following. Think of a situation that makes you feel sad, frustrated, or angry. Now take the following steps. 1. See the situation in your mind that was bothering you so much. Picture it as a movie. Don't feel upset about it, just watch it, seeing everything that happened. 2. Take that same experience and turn it into a cartoon. Sit up in your chair with a big, silly grin on your face, breathing fully, and run the image backward as fast as you can so that you can see everything happening in reverse. Let the movie run backward in very fast motion, then run it forward again in even faster motion. Now change the colors of the images so that everybody's faces are rainbow colored. If there's someone in particular who upsets you, cause their ears to grow very large like Mickey Mouse's, and their nose to grow like Pinocchio's. Do this at least a dozen times, back and forth, sideways, scratching the record of your imagery with tremendous speed and humor. Create some music in your mind as you do this. Maybe it's your favorite song, or maybe some type of cartoon music. Link these weird sounds to the old image that used to upset you. Key to this whole process is the speed at which you play back the imagery and the level of humor and exaggeration you can link to it. 3. Now think about the situation that was bothering you and notice how you feel now. If done effectively, you'll easily have broken the pattern so many times you'll find it difficult or impossible to get back into those negative feelings. As simplistic as it seems, Effectively scrambling a situation will work in most cases, even where trauma has been involved. Why does it work? Because all of our feelings are based on the images we focus on in our minds and the sounds and sensations we link to those specific images. As we change the images and sounds, we change how we feel. Conditioning this again and again makes it difficult to get back into the old pattern. Step 4. Create a new empowering alternative. This fourth step is absolutely critical to establishing long-term change. In fact, the failure by most people to find an alternative way of getting out of pain and into the feelings of pleasure is the major reason most people's attempts at change are only temporary. Many people get to the point where they have to change, where change is a must, because they link so much pain to their old pattern and they link pleasure to the idea of changing. They even interrupt their patterns. But after that, they have nothing to replace the old pattern. Remember, all of your neurological patterns are designed to help you get out of pain and into pleasure. These patterns are well established, and while they may have negative side effects, if you've learned that a habit can get you out of pain, you'll go back to it again and again since you've found no better way to get the feelings you desire. If you've been following each one of these steps, you've gotten clear about what you wanted and what was preventing you from getting it, 
you've gotten leverage on yourself, you've interrupted the pattern, and now you need to fill the gap with a new set of choices that will give you the same pleasurable feelings without the negative side effects. You must come up with a new way, or a lot of new ways, to replace whatever benefits you used to get from the old behavior. The benefits of the old feelings or behaviors must be preserved by the new behaviors or feelings while eliminating the side effects. If you're not sure how to get yourself out of pain and to feel pleasure as a replacement to your smoking, drinking, worrying, or other undesirable emotion or behavior, you can simply find the answers by modeling people who have turned things around for themselves. Often, if we just break our old patterns enough, our brains will automatically search for a replacement pattern to give us the feelings we desire. This is why people who finally break the pattern of smoking sometimes gain weight, their brains look for a new way to create the same kinds of pleasurable feelings, and now they eat mass quantities of food to get them. The key, then, is for us to consciously choose the new behaviors or feelings with which we're going to replace the old ones. Step 5. Condition the new pattern until it's consistent. Conditioning is the way to make sure that a change you create is consistent and lasts long term. The simplest way to condition something is simply to rehearse it again and again until a neurological way is created. If you find an empowering alternative, imagine doing it until you see that it can get you out of pain and into pleasure quickly. Your brain will begin to associate this as a new way of producing this result on a consistent basis. If you don't do this, you'll go back to the old pattern. If you rehearse the new empowering alternative again and again with tremendous emotional intensity, you'll carve out a pathway, and with even more repetition and emotion, it will become a highway to this new way of achieving results, and it will become a part of your habitual behavior. Remember, your brain can't tell the difference between something you vividly imagine and something you actually experience. Conditioning ensures that you automatically travel along the new route, that if you spot one of the off-ramps you used to take all the time, now you just speed past them, in fact, they'll actually become difficult to take. Knowing the fundamentals of conditioning enables us to take control of those forces and create the destiny of our choice. We can live like animals, manipulated by circumstances and those around us, or we can learn from these laws, using them to maximize our fullest potential. The first organizing principle of any type of success conditioning is the power of reinforcement. You and I must know that in order to get ourselves to consistently produce any behavior or emotion, we must create a conditioned pattern. All patterns are the result of reinforcement, specifically, the key to creating consistency in our emotions and behaviors is conditioning. Any pattern of emotion or behavior that is continually reinforced will become an automatic and conditioned response. Anything we fail to reinforce will eventually dissipate. We can reinforce our own behavior or someone else's through positive reinforcement, that is, every time we produce the behavior we want, we give a reward. That reward can be praise, a gift, a new freedom, etc. or we can use negative reinforcement. This might be a frown, a loud noise, or even physical punishment. It's crucial for us to understand that reinforcement is not the same as punishment and reward. Reinforcement is responding to a behavior immediately after it occurs, while punishment and reward may occur long afterward. Appropriate timing is absolutely critical to effective conditioning. Why? Because we always want to link the sensations of reinforcement in the pattern that is occurring. This is the only way to truly change our behaviors and emotions long term. We must train our brains to do the things that are effective, not intellectually but neurologically. The challenge, of course, is that most of us don't realize that we're all conditioning each other and shaping each other's behaviors constantly. Often, we're conditioning people negatively instead of positively. When you're beginning to establish a new behavior or a new emotional pattern, it's very important that you reinforce yourself or anyone else you're trying to establish these new patterns for. In the beginning, every time you perform the desired behavior, you need to give yourself acknowledgement, pleasurable reinforcement of a type that you truly will appreciate and enjoy. However, if you reinforce the behavior every time thereafter, eventually your rewards will no longer be effective or appreciated. What at one time was a unique and enjoyable surprise will become an expected norm. 
The most important thing to remember about conditioning, however, is to reinforce the desired behavior immediately. Conditioning is critical. This is how we produce consistent results. Once again, remember that any pattern of emotional behavior that is reinforced or rewarded on a consistent basis will become conditioned and automatic. Any pattern that we fail to reinforce will eventually dissipate. Step 6. Test it. Let's review what you've accomplished. You've decided upon the new pattern of emotion or behavior that you desire. You've gotten leverage on yourself to change it. You've interrupted the old pattern. You've found a new alternative and you've conditioned it until it's consistent. The only step left is to test it to make sure that it's going to work in the future. One of the ways of doing this that's taught in neuro-linguistic programming is future pacing. This means that you imagine the situation that used to frustrate you, and notice if in fact it still makes you feel frustrated or if your new pattern of feeling fascinated has replaced it. By imagining the same stimuli that used to trigger your old emotion or behavior and noting that you do feel certain that your new empowering alternative is automatic, you will know that this new pattern will work for you in the future. If all you do is the first three steps of NAC, that may be enough to create tremendous change. Once you've decided what you want, gained leverage, and interrupted the pattern, life often provides you with new ways of looking at things. And if the leverage is strong enough, you'll be compelled to find a new pattern and condition it, and you can pretty much count on the world to give you the test. Now you have the knack of change. The key is to use it. But you won't unless you know what you're using it for. You've got to know what you truly desire, you must find. Chapter 7, How to Get What You Really Want